Well, I think I've been invited as one of the less cool lecturers um, to make a few uh, comments at the end. I, I wouldn't say this is going to be a summary, but it is uh, there's far too much to summarize. Uh, but it will be a few observations. Uh, but before I do that, I wanted to make one final puff on behalf of the RAI, which is, you know, is, uh, was co-sponsored of this uh, event. And I know that the RAI has been very pleased about this initiative. Uh, I think we regard it as being extremely important. I understand there's going to be some kind of write-up in anthropology today, which I think will be quite useful to get the message around. Uh, and that you know, this may be the beginning of uh, something uh, quite considerable, as was suggested earlier. Uh, and also on behalf of the RAI, I want to just mention this uh, conference that we are sponsoring uh, in June this year, 8th and 9th of June, Anthropology in the World at the British Museum. Uh, it tries to address some of the issues that you've all been uh, speaking about over the last few days, uh, particularly you know, the, the major issue as to how we take the insights of anthropology outside the academy and integrate them into our lives and into uh, general public uh, affairs. Uh, anthropology has had some success in doing that in the past, uh, but not nearly enough. Okay, well, how can I summarize up such an event as, as this? Um, not very easily. Uh, I have been, I think the word is bowled over by what you've been able to do over these last few days, and I've been trying to reflect upon how uh, it is it's possible. I think it's partly because you haven't been organized by people like me. I mean, this whole thing has been spontaneous. Yeah? There's been an incredibly high level of motivation, yeah? um, a very high standard of presentation, if I might say so, um, very professional organization. The whole thing has been energizing, yeah? and I think it's raised enormous questions. Uh, which we can't do more than begin to address at an event like this, but I'm sure we will all be taking forward. Um, well, the organizers probably have a clearer idea of the, the themes that have sort of been addressed throughout these two days. Um, and unfortunately, I haven't been able to be present for every single presentation, uh, but it's quite clear to me that there are various distinct uh, lines of inquiry which you've been pursuing, uh, which you know, haven't simply been confined to particular presentations or sessions. They've been you know, connecting and getting entangled uh, throughout the whole uh, meeting. I mean, one of them has been this question of anthropological uh, education. Um, <clears throat> starting off right at the beginning uh, and then ending up with uh, the, the film we've just seen uh, a few moments ago. So that's anthropological education not only within the academy but outside it. Uh, then there's uh, how anthropology works in multidisciplinary or multi-subject schools and departments. And in a sense, that was part of the, the origin of this particular uh, event, as you've, you, you've heard. Uh, there are, fortunately, a, a, a few uh, departments around the country that are entirely devoted to anthropology. But most of the anthropology that is taught in this country is taught uh, in schools and departments, in universities, uh, where there cheek by jowl, yes, with other subjects. And I think we really do have to address the sorts of challenges that this, uh, this, this, this raises. And there's been some reflection on the particular circumstances we, we find at, 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 at Kent and the attempts we make to resolve them. But uh, I'm sure the issues uh, are in some ways similar elsewhere, uh, but you may seek to resolve them in different ways. 
And then there's the general theme of, of you know, how student anthropologists at an undergraduate level can effectively organize themselves uh, in different ways. Uh, and of course, the sort of standard institutional way of doing this is the Student Anthropology Society, and we've heard a bit about that, different ways of organizing student anthropology societies. I was the secretary of the LSE Student Anthropology Society in 1967-8. Um, now, you know, I would like to think that we had your energy then, there weren't quite as many of us, but we were attempting to do things, I think, in far more conventional ways. Ways that perhaps were you know, uh, the only ones that were available at that time, and, and, and now as we move forward some decades, there are new opportunities uh, opening up. No more so, and this has been mentioned a number of times, the role of social media, you know, which means that you know, it's not simply a question of having a, a sort of lone uh, um, <clears throat> student anthropology society in one institution. You can liaise very easily with interested undergraduates uh, elsewhere. So I think that's uh, important. And then I suppose the great bulk of what we've heard over the last few days has, uh, has been these wonderful, this wonderful variety of different undergraduate uh, uh, projects on themes as diverse as statecraft, identities, form of politics, uh, paleopathology, early kinship, lived futures, tooling, and then you know, how do we work things out as individual uh, anthropologists in the situations in which we learn and, 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 and work and live. And I think the importance of all of these is, for me, has been not that anthropology is simply about reading. What have you read at university? But it's about doing, and really, you know, there's been so much resistance over the years, sometimes for very well articulated reasons, I think. You know, there's prevented undergraduates in particular from actually doing research. Uh, that you know, it, it's only now that I think uh, we're beginning to change the way we teach anthropology and to involve much more uh, hands on work for, anth uh, for anth anthropologists. And I really don't think there's any other way. Uh, in, in which you can really appreciate uh, the importance of you know, several generations of previous anthropologists, except by attempting to do anthropology yourselves uh, in various parts of the real world. Uh, another big issue that I think has come up is this whole question of um, anthropology and uh, activism. Uh, that really links up with the last point I made. Uh, and although I think we think of anthropology as, a, uh, as an international and global uh, enterprise, um, activism inevitably, you know, to have impacts, is something that is going to be uh, fairly local. So it's that hoary old slogan, you know, uh, think global, act locally. Uh, but I think the other thing about activism, uh, quite apart from whatever sort of real world effects it might have, uh, is that it's really an extension of all those projects and doing anthropology. And, uh, as we saw, that you know, anthropology only begins to make sense when we take it out into the real world. You know, we understand the particular issues about uh, re the research techniques we use, participatory observation, and indeed, Theorizing. It only really makes sense uh, when it comes up against the hard realities of the lives that we lead. And thinking of capitalism at the present time, and, and rather wondering why you know, this critique didn't happen earlier, because I've always thought that economic anthropology, at least the economic anthropology that I was taught, uh, was in itself a kind of critique of capitalism, but it never really got off the ground in the way one might have expected. And of course, you know, the reason why things are moving now in the way that they are is events, dear boy, events. This whole thing is driven by what we've all been experiencing uh, over the last uh, few, few years. Okay, well, uh, my final observation is simply about 
anthropology as, as science or, or as a bounded uh, discipline. There's been quite a lot of discussion about this, and, and quite rightly so. Um, I think anthropology does compel us to uh, address disciplinary boundaries. Um, my work has been largely in the area of environmental anthropology, and I've always felt that throughout my professional career, I've been up against some kind of interdisciplinary boundary of some kind. Yes? I've never been simply an anthropologist. I've always had to deal with environmental scientists and uh, various other people. Uh, so anthropology, I think, forces to us to address these disciplinary boundaries, and partly because of its internal problematic as well. Um, I mean, it's so wonderful to see the way in which the different strands of our subject uh, are coming together and reflected in what's been happening here over the last few days. How do we sort of resolve, you know, the, the sort of philosophical uh, antagonism between naturalistic and humanistic uh, approaches to our subject? Um, <clears throat> all these internal contestations which a lot of people think are a reason for separating out the various parts of anthropology, I think are really the reason why we should all be together. You know, because I think that's simply uh, not facing up to the issues, scientific and, and humanistic. I think there always has to be contestation uh, within anthropology. Anthropology is always up against one uh, interface uh, or the other. And as Chris and I put it, and I would rather like this metaphor, anthropology is kind of Clapham Junction of, 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 of ideas, of uh, human biology and sociocultural uh, and anthropology. So uh, these are all the things that uh, I thought have come out particularly well at uh, this event, and uh, I'm terribly pleased to have been uh, invited. Um, in fact, this is my final year as a teacher at the University of Kent, uh, and I rather have, have regret having had to wait this long. <laughs> I've been, and I've, unfortunately, I've handed in my letter of resignation, so there's no question that I will be coming back, but I'm sorely tempted to, uh, given the kinds of things that you're, you're, you're doing. I mean, you've really given a voice to undergraduate anthropology. Yeah? Uh, I think you're absolutely right to have high expectations of our subject, and indeed, to have high expectations of yourselves. So thank you very much indeed. <laughs>